to my computer. All right. All right, guys, let's go. It is game time. Welcome to week number. I don't even know where we're at. We're um, about five months into this thing in Elevate Mentorship, and uh, we're fired up and excited uh, for tonight's call. Obviously, you guys are about to see uh, you guys are about to hear from a gentleman that I've been working with for the last few years that's made a huge impact on this entire organization and on this company. But um, for those of you who don't know if you're brand new to this call, this is a 26-week series leading to Elevate Convention in Orlando, Florida. That's a convention, which is a weekend long, where people fly in from around the country and even around the world to learn from the best, hear from the best educators, hear from the top earners of the company, hear from the up and comers, the rising stars. Uh, we do recognition, we have VIP parties, um, it, all the above. It's like a big weekend family celebration. And these are just small calls, mentorship calls leading to um, Elevate Convention in Orlando. If you don't have your ticket yet, make sure you get your ticket. It is the weekend of March 20 something, 23rd, 24th, I think. I think March 24th. Um, but you can type in the chat if you want to, or even drop the link in the chat so some people on this call can get their ticket if they don't already have it. Um, but that being said, guys, check this out. I don't, I wasn't gonna bring it up, but it's it's kind of shiny. I got a little makeup on my face right now. <laughs> this is totally off topic, but uh I went to a, a dermatologist. And I had this little blemish on my forehead and she's like, oh, it's just like a little bro broken little vein. And I was putting like a uh, cover up on it for a while. I'm like, oh, I don't know what it is, but I get better get it checked out. And she's like, we can just zap it off with a laser. And I'm like, zap it off with a laser. And she's like, yeah, it'll barely leave a bruise. And it was like the biggest, if I take this cover up off, it's like a massive black bruise and it is so embarrassing. So I was throwing on some of Brit's makeup and I'm like, oh dude, it's shining like crazy. But um, I was a little insecure about it. So I had to throw some makeup on there, but then you could see it. So it's all good. I was just making sure that it wasn't some sort of cancerous thing. So it's not. It was just a little uh, vein that broke or whatever. So she said it's going to heal, but it just left a big bruise. That was just a side topic. All right. That, that was just a side topic of my insecurities that are happening right now. But it's all good. Um, so, yeah, guys, we have recordings of Elevate Mentorship as well. If you want to go back to my YouTube channel, there's like 17 of the, the top earners in the company, some educators, some top earners, some both. Um, and you can go watch those again if you want to. I would highly uh, encourage you guys to do so if you, if you haven't seen some of the previous uh, mentorship calls that we've done. But step number one is make sure your entire organization is on these calls. And that's one thing I need to do better at. That's one thing, you know, some some other people need to do better at is just promoting these calls more. This is basically just our US-based organization. Uh, and I know we can do better than this, but it's all good. Uh, it's all good. I, and I take it personal. I'm going to keep going out there and grinding and building this empire and you guys can roll with. Um, but let's promote these heavy guys. I know what this th these calls have done for me in my, in, in my career um, throughout my journey learning what to do, what not to do, hearing the success stories, the motivation, the inspiration, uh, and it happened on calls just like this. And so appreciate you, Taylor Gordon, for posting the replays in there. Uh, but then step number two is make sure you're taking notes. We all know the reality of you're going to forget 90% of the information if you're not actually writing this stuff down. So you can take notes. I break the code. We got the new notebook. I don't know if anyone's using it, but I got my notebook right here, right? So you can take notes. Um, and then step number three is... Just a disclaimer, there's no income. We may or may not talk about income on this call, but if we do, there's no guarantees regarding income. Your success or failure depends on your own skill set and personal effort. Basically saying, if you don't do anything, you're not going to make any money. I was cool with that because I saw what was possible and I believed in myself and I believed in my mentor that he would teach me and give me the roadmap to be able to achieve a dream life, which I've done and I'm still doing to this day. And it's not about me. My goal is just to pull other people up with me so I can help, so I can get them on this level as well. Um, but the gentleman you're going to be hearing from today, you all know him, you all love him. Um, but I'm just going to say a couple of things real quick before I pass it over to him. Because uh, I know we have some newer people on here. We have some people that have been with us for a while. But me and this gentleman, uh, he, he joined my organization back in 2020 right? So 2020, he joined my organization. He came from a previous company. He had a couple years of experience in a previous company. And the person that he worked with over there, see, I pride myself in my previous company. I had great leadership. I'm very grateful for that. I was cultivated an amazing community uh, of leadership and excellence over there, you know, from the basics to 
the psychology of success, all the above. I learned a lot in my previous company, but I was like, it's time to earn a lot. And that's why I came here and partnered with Alex Morton and a great company here. Um, but this gentleman you're going to hear from tonight, he came, he came from a previous company from amazing mentorship and guidance and leadership as well with a guy named Nick Sarnicola. And, and he's one of my favorites. Ever since I got in this industry, I knew who that guy was. He's like a little bit older version of Alex Morton. And so he came from that company, learning from him. And then he, and then or this gentleman came here. He wasn't just learning from me, but he was also learning from Alex Morton as well. So he was brought up in amazing leadership in this industry. And one thing I'm going to point out is you're going to hear that when he's talking tonight, you're going to hear some of that leadership coming out tonight. And you, you, if you're like me, I can sit here to this day. I don't care if I'm a million dollar hall of famer, none of that. I'm listening to this gentleman. I'm like, he's the real deal. He absolutely is the real deal. He knows what he's doing. He knows where he's going. And uh, he just has a mouthpiece on him to be able to deliver this information to help you guys take your business to the next level in such a way that is, it just makes an impact. Simple as that. That's the best way I can put it. It just makes an impact. And he's going to hop on here and be like, I hope I can deliver as good as you're saying, dude, you will. Cause you are one of the best and people might not even know it yet. Um, so he's a chairman in the organization. It took him less than a year to hit chairman in his mid twenties. This is all he does. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have side hustles. His main focus is right here. And not only that team ambition wouldn't have the systems we have today if it wasn't for this gentleman. And that's just all facts. So with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to my brother, Mr. Tyler Sorensen. Let's go. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Give me a I thumbs up. I can hear up. you. Okay. I, I see you just got your hair done. You're ready to rock. Yeah. You, you like that? I, uh, well, I didn't have, any... I like it, but not as much as the light, bro. You brought in the light. Yeah. You like that little, little mood lighting for the call, but, go. uh, man, I, I appreciate you as always for, uh, the kind, very kind introduction. And, uh, just so you know, bro, we actually couldn't see, I couldn't tell at least the, that you had the makeup even on. So, you know, we wouldn't have even known if you didn't say it, but Hey, that's neither here nor there. Um, but guys, do me a huge favor and put some ones in the chat for our chairman 100, Mr. Joey Wilson. Obviously, uh, it goes without saying, but I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for his leadership, you know, and his guidance. And, um, you know, it's funny because my first year probably in this company, I didn't even I wasn't even working that closely with Joey. And I think part of that comes from um, I had a little bit of know-it-all syndrome, I think is probably the, the best way to put it. If I'm being just open, honest, and transparent. Um, and for those of you guys that don't know, uh, my story and so we're not complete strangers, you know, I've, I've, uh, I'm 27 now, believe it or not. I also suffer from a little thing called baby face syndrome. I would like to grow a beard like Richard Ustra someday. I don't know if he, if he made the call or not tonight, but, uh, if you guys, you know, if you know, you know, but, uh, I'm 27. I was 20 back when I got introduced to to this industry. I had a very blue collar, middle class upbringing. I grew up in a town in Wisconsin where there's literally more cows than people. I think the population was about 1500. Uh, my entire high school had 300 kids in it. So very, very, very small, small town. My mom was a nurse. Uh, my dad owns a body shop where he fixes cars for a living. So that's what I got the pleasure of doing growing up through middle school, through high school, my Christmas breaks, my spring breaks, my summer vacations, because I was his son. And because I was under the age of 18, he could legally, you know, tell me I got to work for you. You live under my, my uh, roof and you live by my rules. You're going to come work for me at the body shop. I'm going to teach you all these things, hard work, you know, and, and the value of a dollar and working, you know, uh, by the hour and all these things. And you could pay me a dollar an hour under the minimum wage legally because I was his son and I was under the age of 18. And that's what I did for a number of years. And, you know, I learned a lot about hard work. I learned a lot about, you know, obviously trading your time for money. And that was the path I was on. But I saw, um, you know, a lifestyle as we all have at, at a young age that I I wanted. I saw people, you know, on TV, I saw professional athletes, I saw actors, musicians that, you know, lived amazing lives, and they made, you know, millions and millions of dollars, they had freedom, they had, you know, uh, people that that admired them, people that they were helping, people that they were inspiring. And, you know, I was like, man, I, I want that. I knew that I wanted big, big things in my life. And, and for those of you guys on the call, you know, do me a favor and put a one in the chat if you knew that you were put on this earth to do something special, but you just had no idea what it was. And I don't know what it was for me, uh, but I knew deep down that I always wanted to do something great. And I think every human being has that, you know, intuitive feeling deep down that they want to do something special with their life. They want to do something big. But at some point along the lines, someone or something came along and said, hey, be practical, be realistic, 
right? Compromise, you know, play it safe. Don't, don't think too high. Don't get your hopes up. And all these things that, you know, we're taught through, you know, the indoctrination camps uh, that people call school, uh, or we're taught this from our family or our friends or all these different places. And, uh, you know, for me, that's what I was doing. I said, okay, I want to do these big, amazing things. And, uh, you know, I can't sing all that well. I, I like to think that I can, but, you know, the reality is I don't think anybody would pay me to do that. So I can't sing. I can't act. I can't rhyme. I can't dance. So I'm not going to go and do any of that stuff. I'm not going to do anything illegal. Um, so that left sports for me. Uh, my biggest dream growing up was to go play in the NFL someday. I'm a, I'm a diehard Packers fan. Grew up watching Brett Favre and Rodgers. And I'm like, you know what? That's what I want to do someday. And uh, I ended up going to college to to play football. And uh, after that, you know, ended up not working out because uh, I wanted to play quarterback. I'm only five foot nine. Uh, for those of you guys that uh, that don't know, us short kings, we don't get a whole lot of love when it comes to getting recruited, being only five nine, trying to play the the position of quarterback. But that's neither here nor there. And for me, uh, it it got to a point where I'm like, okay, well now that this dream has kind of come to an end, like what what's going to be next? And you know, I, all I knew was go to school, get good grades, graduate, go get a job, work forty hours a week for the man. Um, and you're going to go and do that, right? And you're going to climb the corporate ladder. I mean, this is all stuff that you guys have all heard, but it's funny how. Uh, I could I could rattle off a list of things, a list of beliefs that you guys could finish my sentences, right? You need to, you know, you need to study hard so you can get good grades. You guys could finish that. You need to uh, get good grades so you can graduate and go get a good job, right? And you got to go work 40 hours a week, 50, you know, 40 hours a week, 40 years of your life. And eventually you can retire on 40% of your income. And um, I got introduced to the number one way of wealth creation at 20 years old while I was going to college full time. I was working full time, um, still you know, working at a car dealership and uh, cause that's all that I had ever known. And uh, I got introduced to entrepreneurship, which ironically is the number one way around the world that human beings can create wealth. Uh, go figure. Right. And um, you know, for me, I got introduced to it. I was, uh, I remember I'm sitting at work and I got a text message actually on Snapchat from a buddy. And for those of you guys that, you know, you're brand newer, you're starting your, your, uh, your entrepreneurship journey here and you're, you're reaching out to people for the very first time. And, you know, you're worried about saying the right thing. I'll give you guys a tip right now, which is you can't say the, uh, the wrong thing to the right person. And I have screenshots still to this day of that, uh, that interaction when I got quote unquote pitched or recruited into this industry and, uh, he did everything wrong. I mean, he literally verbally vomited all over me. He told me what it costs. Uh, he wrote paragraph after paragraph um, and in the most unprofessional way possible. But again, I was the right person. And I was somebody that was like, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I just knew that I wanted to do something amazing. I wanted to do something big. I wanted to have a lot of success financially. I wanted to have freedom and choices and to be able to do things. You know, I grew up, I saw, I saw my family where the only time they ever really fought was about money. And, you know, that was every single fight in our household was over income. And I'm like, I would love to get to a point where, you know, I don't ever have to, for my family, my future family that I don't ever have to fight about money because we all would agree that money is not the most important thing in the world, but it's funny how we all say, we all believe that, but yet we don't, we don't put enough urgency on figuring out the money game sooner. So we can actually worry about the things that really matter, your family, right? Your, your, your memories, your moments, your, all these things that we worry about that we, you know, put in the back seat to making an income, going to job, paying your bills, all these things. And, uh, you know, so for me, just to make a long story short, I got introduced to a company called Visalis in 2016. Um, and uh, I didn't know anything about anything. I remember when I got started, uh, my upline told me to go make a list of names. And I'm like, what am I making a list of names for exactly? Uh, this is how confused I was. He's like, you're actually going to reach out to this list of names and you're going to get them on a Zoom call like what you just did. And I'm like, oh, wait, I, got actually, I actually got to talk to people. That's how That's how much I didn't care when it came to how I was going to do this or how I was going to make it happen or how this really works just because I was willing to do pretty much anything at that point, as long as it was legal, moral, and ethical to figure out a way to escape the rat race. And that's what I got really, really passionate about, uh, you know, at 20 years old was uh, just finding a way to just get free and not be stuck clocking in and clocking out for somebody else for the rest of my life. One of the things that I heard was, you know, there's three categories of people, right? When you're trading your time for money, you either have a lot of time and no money because you're never working or you have a lot of money and no time because you're always working or in some cases you have no time and no money because what you're doing just isn't working and i was scared to death of being stuck in that situation for my entire life so i said okay here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go all in with it and uh, that's what i did and i did not have fast success i think that's probably one of the most important things that i could tell you guys 
um, is, you know, a lot of times you hear these stories of people that join the business and they go and run down chairman, they go make a six figure income in their first six months, their first 90 days, their first two years, whatever it might be. And I got to tell you guys, that wasn't my situation at all. I think I might be, you know, one of like the slowest success stories that, uh, that I may have ever heard, at least for myself personally, and especially in this company. I mean, it is what it is and, and that's okay. Cause everybody starts at a different place. Right. I like to think of it like this. You know, if you take the football field as an analogy, we're in football season, so this will make sense. Every single person has a goal of reaching the end zone, right? Scoring a touchdown. Well, some people, they start at the 20 yard line, right? They're right in the red zone. They're, they're right there. They've already built the credibility. They've built the network. They've got the people skills. Uh, they know how to prospect. They know how to present. They know how to close. They know how to do these things. Some people start there, right? And then there's other people, they start a little bit farther back. They start at maybe midfield. Other people start maybe at the other goal line, right? And then you have other people that they're in the locker room or they're in the parking lot or they're on the other end of town. And that's where I believe I was because I had a lot to learn. I had, I had never done anything like this before, but I was coachable and teachable and I was hungry to get to the next level. So, um, you know, that's, that's really all that I did. And just to fast forward, um, you know, I was with that company for about three years. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I was suffering from a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I thought that I was going to, you know, burn out from this industry. And I had been watching this company from the sidelines for a while. Obviously, I'd learned from Alex Morton and, and the other leaders that were in IM Academy. And uh, I just said, you know what, if I ever did any other company, I would probably do IM not to even build the business, but just to learn how to trade. And so enjoy will tell you guys this when I got started in January of 2020. Uh, that's all that I did. I actually told I actually told him that I just want to trade. I'm not I'm not here to build. Um, and that's all that I did for probably my first two and a half, three months. I just was a student. I was a customer. I hopped on go lives. I went through the Academy. I, you know, I made some money, lost some money, made some money, lost some money, but I just realized the value that was here. And for those of you guys that whether you're new or you've been around a while, give me some ones in the chat. If you guys know without a shadow of a doubt that the value inside of this company is, you know, is, is, is above the standard. It's above amazing. You got every single thing that you got when you got started with this company. Uh, I mean, it's it's incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Every single company, I'm not here to bash any other company. There's a lot of amazing companies in this space. And I believe we need to lift each other up because there's already enough negative outside noise tearing every single person in this industry down. Um, but the reality is this, here we're not selling lotions, potions, magic creams, shampoos, diets, pills, you know, any of this stuff. We're We're giving people real financial education to change their life. And, you know, you guys know as well as I do in any other company, the only way you can make money is if you build a business, is if you recruit your face off and go put in a bunch of people. I had a team in my previous company where I was making maybe 300 to $400 a month residually. And I had about 250 active in my team. And I looked at this compensation plan. I'm like, you're telling me this would be platinum 5,000. This would be 5,000 a month after three and a half years of work. That's where I was at making like $400 a month residual in that other company. And I looked at this and I was like, dude, I need to learn something else where it has nothing to do with people. It has nothing to do with whether people join my business, whether they do anything in my business. I was so aggravated and discouraged. That's where I was at. And when I saw the value here, uh, it was a no brainer. Um, and I went all in with it once and for all. I locked arms with with Joey and the other leadership and uh, we launched this thing. And we, you know, we put in about 600 customers in the next 11 months and uh, knocked out Chairman 10. And you know, I guess you could kind of say that that the rest is history. And I'm going to go over some things tonight, guys, just a few core fundamentals that I believe will help you. I don't know everything under the sun. If I did, I'd already be a, a chairman elite, chairman 750 at the top of the compensation plan. So I don't know everything, but I have learned quite a bit over the last six and a half years that I believe will help you guys, regardless of where you're at, you know, in your journey, whether you've been around the industry for a while or whether you're a little bit newer in your first six months, your first 12 months inside of this business, some things that can help you guys. But before I get into that, I do want to ask your guys' permission to speak to each and every one of you guys as a chairman. Every single person on here, I understand, has different goals, right? Whether you're doing this spare time, part time, or you're somebody that says, you know what? I do want to shoot for the stars. I do want to go hit chairman 10, chairman 50, chairman 100, chairman 750 and above. Uh, give me a yes or a no if I have your guys' permission to talk to you as a chairman tonight. Give me a yes or no if I have your permission to talk to you guys as a chairman tonight or somebody that is on their journey to becoming a chairman tonight inside of the chat because guys you know here's what i believe i understand that there are people that do this part-time they do this spare time but i believe that is coming from a, a mindset of scarcity doubt and fear i do not buy the story that you do not want to be a chairman i i don't buy the story that you that you don't want to make six or seven figures 
inside of the network marketing profession, because I know without a shadow of a doubt, if I ask each and every single one of you guys, if, Hey, if I were to offer you chairman, 10 income, $10,000 a month, pure passive residual income for the rest of your life, are you going to, are you going to say yes or no to that income? If I offered you a million dollar income, are you going to say yes or no to that? Of course, you're going to say yes. I don't buy the story, you know, when people say, well, I just want to do this on the side, make it a little side hustle, side gig. I don't believe that story because I know you would gladly accept the income. If you believe that it was possible, you would gladly accept the income, right? And this is true for every single person that you talk to, guys. And it's really funny. Obviously, Grant Cardone talks about how there's a sale made uh, in every single conversation. And, you know, you either you either sell them on on why their dreams and why their visions are worth pursuing and uh, in thinking a lot bigger than they are currently, or they sell you on why, you know, I just want to play it safe. I just want to do this as a side little fun thing. Um, and we as the leaders, we have the ability and the position to, you know, instill mindset and skill set in another person to think bigger, to dream bigger, to plug into something that actually works um, can, and can get them where they want to go. And then there's a lot of responsibility that comes to that, guys. And the first thing that I want you guys to write down, if you are taking notes, is is step up. I want you to write that in all caps on the top of your paper is step up because, you know, this means that you are going to step up as the chairman inside of your life with everything, right? Not just, not just the business, but everything in your life in order to, you know, unlock a chairman income, you have to first become that chairman. And I think for me guys, um, you know, one of the things that held me back for a long time was the blessing of having amazing uplines was having amazing leadership, right? I had uh, an upline that would do every three-way phone call that I needed. He would do every presentation that I needed. And for a while that did, that did create a crutch. Because it got to a point eventually, guys, where if he wasn't around, my business didn't grow. And I needed him to do a presentation. I needed him to do a three-way call. And this is not me saying that, um, you know, if you have an upline that is willing to do these things for you and is willing to serve you and is willing to help you grow your business, I want you guys to take advantage of that and use that. Don't be a rebel and, and become uncoachable all of a sudden. That's not at all what, what I'm trying to say by, by step up. But, you know, you can't put your success in the hands of somebody else right? You have to become the professional. You have to learn how to do a presentation. You have to learn how to prospect. You have to learn how to invite. You have to learn how to follow up. You have to learn how to close. You have to learn how to launch a new customer effectively, right? You become a leader when you decide that you're ready to become a leader and you start acting like a leader. That's when you become a leader. See, a lot of times people think becoming a leader is very hard. It's actually, it's actually the opposite. Really what it is, is most people don't become a leader just because they're afraid, they're insecure, they're scared, they're, they're, they're full of doubt and, and all these different things. And I was no different. I think I was probably one of the most insecure people that I've ever met. I still deal with insecurities uh, every single day when it comes to, you know, building this business and, and limiting beliefs and, and things that, that I'm fearful about. Public speaking was my number one fear growing up. I remember when the teacher would say, hey, guys, we're doing an oral report today uh, in, in class, I, my, literally my heart would just, would just drop and I would just be so nervous. I'd get up in front of the room. Uh, my hands would get all clammy and cold. I'd, the paper would be shaking. Uh, my face would get all red. And then I, I'd look up and I'd look at the, the, the eyeballs looking at me and they're just like, dude, Oh my God. Like, like they're uncomfortable, like watching me talk. And it was one of my biggest fears, uh, you know, growing up. So it, it's about taking action when you're not ready, right? You're never going to feel ready to do your first presentation. You just have to do it. And uh, I was blessed as well when when my upline that I was leaning on for a long time, when he finally, you know, took a step back um, and, you know, he was kind of burning out and he was no longer accessible to me. I got to a point where, again, my business wasn't growing, um, you know, at all because I was dependent on him. And, you know, it got to a point for me. I'm like, you know what? I'm either going to this is my turning point. I'm either going to make an over my dead body decision to make this work and actually become a leader or I'm not going to guys. I, every single leader that I've ever talked to, the only regret that they've ever shared with me is that they didn't step up as a leader sooner. And that was my only, that was my biggest regret too, for probably a year and a half. I didn't step up as a leader. I just, I would show up to some of the calls, you know, I'm getting brainwashed, right. And, and I'm learning all these things and I'm getting the mindsets and I'm learning about prospecting I'm learning about presenting I'm learning about all these things, but I wasn't really doing any of it. I was just staying in my comfort zone. It was really easy to send a text, to make a call, to get somebody in front of the, the, the information. And that's all that I stayed at. And you can build a nice team by doing that. Don't get me wrong. You guys can go hit P1000, P2000, heck probably P5000, you know, by doing that. But at some point you have to step up, you know, and become the leader. Right. And that comes with a lot of different things. We'll circle back to this, uh, you know, towards the end, because I'm going to do something with you guys that 
uh, I think is going to probably be the biggest paradigm shift for each and every single one of you, you know, coming off of this call. But, you know, that's number one is step up, which is also just working on the business. I'm not going to go over how to prospect, how to invite, how to do a presentation. If you need help with that stuff, reach out to your upline, reach out to me if you want to on Instagram. And, and I'm more than happy to help. Um, but guys, the reality is you already know what to do. Um, there's no magic script. There's no magic lines. There's no magic anything that's going to get somebody to sign up with you. If there was, uh, you know, we there would be no opportunity because everybody would already be here. You know what I'm saying? So there's no magic thing. And that's true with this business. And that's true with trading. You already know what to do. 5% of success in the markets is a strategy. 95% is psychology. 5% of success in this business is what you say to people or how you give a presentation, right? What you say during the presentation, 95% of it, everything else is just psychology, right? And your ability to transfer your belief to somebody else, right? People don't follow you because of what you say. They don't even believe what you say sometimes. They just need to believe that you believe what you're saying. And one of the coolest things that I learned from stage, I think it was Gary Brecka that, uh, that talked about this. For anybody here that believes in law of attraction, manifestation, uh, any of these things, um, this is one thing that, that kind of blew my mind and it makes all the sense in the world. He said that, um, he said, you know, he asked the, the audience, what is the, the most powerful frequency that you can, you know, emit everybody saying gratitude, love. And what he said was the frequency of authenticity is four times stronger than the frequency of love. And to be authentic, all that means is that you're speaking the truth and that you believe what you're saying. And when you come, when you speak from a place of authenticity, that is when people follow you because people follow people that know where they're going. People don't follow people that if they, if they think that you're just going to, you know, see you're dabbling, you're one foot in, you're one foot out. People can sense that from a mile away and they might not say that to you, but when they're giving you these objections, like, oh, I don't know, I got to think about it. Or, um, you know, I, you know, I, now's not the right time. Or, you know, maybe once you make some money, maybe once you hit chairman, that's when I'll finally get started. I got to tell you guys, people that say that they're never getting started with you. Most likely every single person that ever told me, once you make money, I'll get started with you. Those people never got started with me. It was all my friends, all my family, my cousins. Um, it is what it is, you know? So people, people are creative about, you know, coming up with excuses, which are well-planned lies, uh, for why not to get started with you. But the reality is, they need to see you go ahead and do it with or without them. When somebody believes that you're going to go ahead and do something with or without them, that is when they're going to follow you because nobody wants to miss out, right? So people don't have to believe what you're saying necessarily. They just need to believe that you believe it because the, the frequency of authenticity is four times stronger than the frequency of love. So that's number one, which is work on the business and stepping up. Number two is work on yourself. One thing that Alex said from stage at Break the Code was, uh, you know, every single day you need to work on the business and you need to work on yourself. Just those two things every single day. Do you, did you push the needle forward? Did you push the needle forward um, in your business? And did you push the needle forward, uh, you know, in your personal growth and your personal development? And I gave that football field analogy um, before, and that's really what it means. What's going to get you a little bit closer to the end zone, right? And for me, I had a lot of unlearning that I needed to do. You know, we talk sometimes and we make jokes about, oh, you're a part of that cult, right? You're getting brainwashed. And yeah, that's the point. You, a lot of people need a brainwash. I needed my brainwashed, right? There's a lot of crap that got stored up here, right? We, we let so many people, these are all files. These are all files in your head, right? That determine your habits. And everybody says, obviously, your habits are what determine your future. Well, it's funny how at the beginning of this call, when I said you guys could finish my sentences, go to school, get good grades, right? Uh, go get a, a high paying job, right? You guys could literally rattle off uh, money is the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. These are all programs. These are all references that somebody put in here. They weren't your thoughts, right? I think the statistic is about 65% of our beliefs uh, aren't even our own beliefs. They're beliefs that we picked up from somebody else or somewhere else, right? So a lot of the times it's it's beliefs we got from our teachers, our parents, our friends, our family. Some of them are just things we, we you know, pages we follow on social media, right? It's a lot of nonsense, right? And we'll put passwords on our laptops, our computers, our phones, uh, right? Our crypto wallets, but we'll let just anybody come and, you know, take a big old, uh, <laughs> a big old dookie right in our files right up here. And then we go and walk around and we create our habits based off of these beliefs. And uh, one thing that I do want to do with you guys real quick, I'm going to do this. I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if there's a whiteboard, but I'm going to just, I'm going to share trading view because I've seen it worked for, it worked for Mike Sotero last week. Um, but guys, this is something that, that I saw a few years ago that 
was a big paradigm shift for me. So I'm going to draw this box and this isn't mine. This is, this is actually from Tony Robbins, but this is, this is what you would call B A uh, P uh, B excuse my drawings here, guys. I'm not a, I'm not an artist. You don't need to be, you don't need to be super artistic to, uh, to be successful in this business. But so guys, here's what these represent here. This P stands for potential. Right. And I think we could all agree we're all God's highest form of creation and that our potential is infinite. Right. We can do literally anything that we put our mind to if we're willing to work for it and we're willing to be consistent, never give up all these things. Right. Any any person on here has the ability to go chairman 750 if they want to. Any single person on here has the ability to become a chairman in the charts, you know, if they want to and they commit to it. Right. So we can all agree that our potential as human beings is infinite. Right. And our potential. Right. Is is infinite. Well, here, this B stands for beliefs. And then right here, this A stands for actions and R stands for results. Well, you know, our beliefs are going to determine the level of actions that we take. For example, if you guys believe if God came down himself and said, Marcus, if he said uh, Miguel, if he said Mikhail, guys, listen, if you go and you show this business to 1000 people, I will bless your life and make you a chairman 100. Doesn't matter how long it takes you to do it. But once you have shown 1,000 people, documented the presentation, the business, the opportunity, I will make you a chairman 100. God told you this, so your belief is sky high. You're like, dude, I'm going through 1,000 as fast as possible because the big man upstairs himself told me I will be a chairman 100 if I go show 1,000 people, right? And you're going to go and knock that out. So you're going to take massive action. And then you're going to be, you know, bestowed a, a huge result. So you're going to you're gonna have high belief, take massive action, get a big result that's going to reinforce this belief. You're going to take more action, get a better result, so on and so forth. It's actually a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But what does the alternative look like? When your belief is small and you say, man, you know, I got started because it sounds cool. I, I do want to make money trading. That sounds, that sounds pretty neat. Learning the skill, learning how to get my money working for me, compound interest, all that stuff, making a residual. Uh, the team seems really cool. Uh, you know, my belief is, is pretty low because I mean, I don't know, will it really work for me though? You know, I'm somebody that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm insecure, I'm fearful. Uh, nothing's ever, nothing great has ever happened for me. So you, you, you have these little, little tiny beliefs. And when you have tiny beliefs, you end up taking very little to no action. And what happens do you think when you take little to no action, you get a little or no result. And then what does that do? It reinforces it reinforces the little belief that you already had. And then this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy the other way. So either way, momentum can work for you or it can work against you depending on this right here, your belief system. So the only question you should be asking yourself is, well, what determines my beliefs? And it's your references. Remember I said you have to unlearn, you have to unlearn a lot of stuff in order to relearn the right way to think. And that's why I believe I started using that football analogy. I started all the way probably on the other side of town because I had all the wrong ways of thinking. I had all the wrong beliefs about money. I had all the wrong beliefs about people. I had all the wrong beliefs about what success really means and what was really possible. So how you do that is you attend calls like this. I remember spending hours and hours and hours on Zoom calls when I first got started in the industry, just listening to my upline talk. I would listen to him do a three-way call for me. That person would get off. We'd stay on. And in I was... I mean, I was, I'm grateful to this day for that because I mean, he really, you know, brainwashed me the, the right way to think is the, the best way to put it. And then I started doing, uh, you know, personal development, reading books. If you guys, you know, haven't the, my top couple books that I would recommend reading ASAP are 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. Um, and, uh, I would actually read this book right here. U squared. I don't know if you guys can see that U squared, uh, by price Pritchett. Um, those are the two books that I would recommend reading. Um, that, uh, that have made the biggest impact I would say on my life up to this point. And, um, you just have to, you just have to increase this belief. You have to change the references that are going on in your head. So you take different action. So you get a bigger result. And then this starts to work out in your favor. Um, so every single day you need to work on your business. You need to work on yourself. Okay. And then part of that comes from doing this right here. And if you guys have a clean sheet of paper, uh, or don't have a clean sheet of paper, I want you to flip to one right now. And uh, this is something we're going to do together. So uh, I, I know that a lot of times it can be frustrating, especially if you've built a team and built a little bit of an organization um, to any magnitude. 
Uh, it's, it's easy to get frustrated and to say, man, I wish that person would do this. God, I wish that person would do that. Well, this person would be winning if they would just do this. Right. And there's all these things that, that we have to deal with as leaders, right. In, in this business. And today I want to talk to you guys about how to actually find the right person. And, and Joey talks about finding the ace, right. Flipping through the deck of cards, there's four aces in a deck. And how do you find you know, how do you find the ace? And that's what I want to go over with you guys. And you guys are going to help me do that. So uh, real quick, I want you guys to first, we're going to figure out what the actual ideal person we want to work with even looks like, because if we don't identify what that person looks like and what they do, it's going to be hard for us to figure out how to find these people, where to find these people and everywhere in between. So guys, uh, help me out here. What are the characteristics? We're going to do both here. We're going to do a perfect customer. We're going to do a perfect IBO. And I want you guys to just dream with me for a second. What would the perfect customer look like in your business? If you guys could literally go to build a customer, build a bear workshop, and you could literally handcraft your perfect customer, what does that person look like? What do they do? What are their characteristics? What are their habits? I'll start this thing off. Perfect customer for me, I would say somebody, uh, one who gets on go live gets on go live probably five times a week, right? So throughout the week, they're getting on go live. They're getting on go live at least once a day, right? So that's one thing to get us started. Willing and discipline. We're going to do like a top 10. We'll do like a top 10 for both. So willing, willing and discipline. Uh, I should have uh, paid more attention in typing class. Trainable. We got consistent discipline. Okay. Desire to win. Coachable. So we got a lot of those that are that are kind of the same. What are what are some things that that perfect customer does? They're self motivated. Okay, that's a good one. They're self motivated. What else? Do we do we want a customer that is here for uh, a short time, or do we want a customer that's here for uh, the long haul? Right. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put longevity. I'm gonna put longevity as a customer. Oh, I put that in the wrong chat. Longevity. I want I want a customer that's here for the for the long the long term. Right. Uh, enjoys the journey, right? Good one. Ask questions. So inquisitive. They ask questions. Have fun with this guy. I mean, really, what, what do you want the perfect customer to look like? And if you don't know, this is part of the reason that, that you're struggling. You've never actually told yourself, well, what makes the perfect customer? What does the perfect customer look like? What does that person do? Do they just get on go live five times a week? They're willing to discipline. They're self-motivated. They, they're here for the long haul. They ask questions. <clears throat> They ask questions. I would like somebody that is that is positive, right? I want a customer that doesn't complain. I want a, I want a customer that that is solution oriented, determined, passionate about a bigger future. I like that. So we'll put uh we'll put dreams big. Two more. Let's do two more. Back test. That's a good one. They back test or study, so they're taking it serious, right? One more. One more. What's one more good one? And then we'll end it with this. Knows how to navigate the products and services. Oh my God. I would love somebody that, <laughs> that does that. Knows how to navigate. Knows how to navigate the products. Boom. That's good. Responsible. Yeah. These are all good ones. These are all good ones. Okay. So this is a pretty good list. This is a pretty good list for the perfect customer. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's do the 20. There we go. All right. So we got our perfect customer. I really like this person. Type type some ones in the chat if you guys would love a customer like this. They get to go live five times a week. They're willing. They're disciplined. They're self motivated, right? They're here for the long haul. They're not just here for I'm gonna try it out for 28 days, see how it works, and if I'm not making money, I'm gone. Peace out, right? They they cancel their subscription and they you never hear from them again. They go into witness protection. I would love a customer that's here for the long haul, right? I want I want someone that's positive. They're not complaining. They dream big, right? And they're taking it serious. They're studying. They're being a student. They're being a product of the product. Awesome. Okay. So let's do the same thing one more time with the IBO. You could, you could build the perfect business partner right here. Okay. So what does your perfect business partner look like? What is your perfect IBO inside of your organization? If you could work with literally anybody, what do they do? What's their characteristics? What's their habits? What are they like? They're accountable. They do their DMOs. They do their DMOs. You can be specific with DMOs guys. What, what do you really want that to look like? For me, I'm going to add one here. You know, I would say I would love somebody in my business that does three to five presentations a day, three to five prezes, prezes, say that five times fast, three to five prezes a day, six days a week. 
I would love that. Would you guys love that? Show us three to five people a day. Yeah, positive mental attitude. Again, positive. Positive mental attitude. I want somebody that adds energy, right? I want somebody that adds energy to the group chats. I want somebody that's engaged every single day. What else we got? Presents with or without their upline. Ooh, Mikhail, I see you. Presents with or without their upline. I love that. I love that. DMO is daily method of operation, Tyler. What else you guys got? Feels fear and does it anyway. Oh, I like that. Faithful. Feels fear. Still gets it done. I love that. I, I like this person. Social media presence. There we go. Let's do five more. Social media presence. They're faithful. They feel the fear. They do it anyway. They present with or without their upline. They add energy to the group chats. They add energy to the team. They're not selfish. I'll put that. They're not selfish. Influential. Yep. Growth mindset. Credible. Okay. Yep. Credible. We'll put that with uh, with influential. Influential. Yeah. Do you guys, you guys want to recruit somebody in your business that wouldn't change your business even if they got started? Or do you want to, to bring someone in your business that would, you know, if they were to get started, they're going to change your business. They're going to go put in 100, 200, 500 people, right? That's the person I want. And that, that's what I would say credible and influential is, right? A lot of times in the industry, you get so caught up in, in trying to get anybody and every who's willing, right? Who's, who's, who's the next one? Who can I get? Who's going to say yes? That we, that we sometimes, we, we decredit ourselves, we devalue ourselves. And uh, we don't look for people that if they were to get started, that actually change the business. We spend so much time, uh, I did this at least, I spent so much time, you know, trying to convince people that even if they got started, my business wouldn't have looked any different 30 days later, 90 days later, 100 days later anyway, right? And they ended up getting started and they, they ended up quitting. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Taylor says, trustworthy. All right, guys, three more. Trustworthy. Any habits, any things that they do, good communication skills, good communicator. Uh, we're not going to put good good typer because uh, you, you definitely don't need that. Uh, someone who knows about retracements, they're going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, somebody who, how do we put that deals with adversity like a champ? Not here to get rich quick. Yep. They expect valleys resilient. One more. Let's do one more committed to personal growth. I like that committed to personal growth. Yeah. I like this person. I like this person. These are all good. Emotionally intelligent, leverage, perseverance, resilience. Yeah, these guys, give me some 777 or sexy AF in the chat. If you guys would love to have a customer and an IBO in your business, I'm going to add one. I'm going to add one here, actually. As a business builder, I think this is important. I'm going to put in all caps. Product of the product. Would you guys like a, a a business builder that doesn't just talk about it, but he actually plugs in? He actually plugs in to go live. He actually understands, hey, I have a customer that wants to learn scalping. I can show you exactly who to learn from when it comes to scalping. I have a customer that wants to learn uh, smart money concepts. I know exactly where to point them to, to learn smart money concepts for trading. I want somebody like that, right? So this is perfect. So I would love a customer like this. They get on go live. They're willing, they're disciplined. Right, they're selfless, positive for for a, uh, an IBO, a business partner. I would love this. I would love to work with somebody. I'd be their best friend. They do three to five presentations a day, six days a week. They're positive. They add energy to the group. You don't even have to ask them to do it. They just do it on their own. They present winner with with or without their upline. They're faithful. They feel the fear and they do it anyway. They have a social media presence. They're a product of the product. Right? They're credible and influential. They're trustworthy. A good communicator. They deal with adversity like a champ. They're committed to personal growth. So guys, do you know how you attract this person? There's only one way to do it because you can't, there's no crystal ball. You can't just, um, you can't just look at somebody and say, oh, yep, that's the person green check mark above their head or a red X. If you want to attract these types of people that have these qualities, they do these habits. The only question you need to ask yourself is, do you do these things? Are you the perfect customer? And be honest right now. Put a yes or no in the chat. Are you the perfect customer? Yes or no? 
Are you the perfect IBO yet? Yes or no? Because this is not this is not set in stone. You can change at any moment. The moment you make the decision, the moment you say it is done, it is done. But the only way you will ever get a person in your business, unless you strike the lottery, is you have to become that person first. And I had to do a lot of this. And this was something that um, is the only way to have complete accountability and responsibility, responsibility for your business. A lot of times it's easy to have the victim mentality and to say, well, I'd be a chairman if my team just did this. I'd have a chairman if I had a leader. If I could just get that leader that would just go and just run with this thing and take it serious, I could be a chairman 100 just like Joey Wilson. He doesn't understand. He doesn't understand my problems. Guys, our problems are not unique. Every single problem that you have, whether it's in your personal, your professional, your business, it's all been done before. And there's, I could show you person after person after person that has had that problem and come out the other side with, a, with an amazing testimony. And some of these things that, that some of us worry about, there are things that we believe Demas is unqualified to help somebody else. But really, it's the exact reason why you're qualified to help somebody else. You're insecure. Amazing. Go find somebody that's insecure and show them how to do it anyway, right? You don't think that you, you, you don't know what it's like to have any sort of, uh, um, you know, disposable income. You've always been strapped financially. You live paycheck to paycheck. Every single time a bill hits your, your, uh, your bank account, you're stressed out. Okay. There's a lot of people like that. A lot of people like that. Did you guys know over 50% of at least the United States, if they had to scrape up, they wouldn't be able to scrape up a thousand bucks for a, an emergency expense. Kind of crazy. I think the statistic is over 80%. 80% of uh, all people around the world, uh, or maybe it might be the United States, they have less than $5,000 to their name. Everything included, all their assets, everything they own, cash, all that stuff. And it, it's not just about, obviously, your net worth or whatever, but this is this is how you go chairman. This is what a chairman is. Okay, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if anybody tells you anything different. In my opinion, if, if somebody tells you that, you know, you don't need to become these things in order to have these things. I, I mean, good luck, man. I haven't figured it out. If somebody else has figured it out, you know, kudos to them, but you have to become this person. And that's the beautiful part about striving to become a millionaire, striving to become a chairman is the person you become in the process, right? You have to become a lot better version of yourself to unlock chairman in the back office. You have to become a lot better person to unlock a six figure trading account on your live account. You have to you have to become a better person, a better version of yourself. And that's the most noble part about this business, guys, is it's not just about the rank. It's not just about the money. It's not just about this or that. It's about who you become in the process. And it's perpetual. It never ends, right? You're never going to be at the finish line and you, and you shouldn't want to be at the finish line. Your best friends are going to be the two words until and despite. And this is the last thing that you guys can write down, which is trust the process. Trust the process. Because when God's timing meets your preparation, that is when you'll have your breakthrough. Joey talks about it all the time. And he talks about the uh, the simple daily disciplines versus the simple daily errors in judgment, right? The, the slight edge philosophy, doing the same thing, doing the right things over and over and over again in the compounded effect of that. You don't know when your time's going to come, guys. And the, be the best part about this business, the best part about this industry is you are always one person away. You are always one text, one Facebook message, one Instagram DM, or in my case, one freaking Snapchat message away from a completely different business overnight. You guys, could, the very next person you talk to could be the next Alex Morton. And what I choose to believe, guys, is, I mean, guys, this company, I mean, if you guys, especially if you're in the United States, I know there might be people hopping on and, and watching this from other parts of the world. Um, the United States is wide open. It is what it is. And uh, we have the opportunity to, you know, own this company in the United States and and take it to heights that it's never been. Uh, and I believe that this company, the, the highest paid income earner inside of I Am Mastery Academy probably isn't even in the company yet. And we all have the opportunity to go find that person. And we do that by first becoming that person, by doing these things, having these habits, right? Doing this one day at a time, one day at a time, stacking the wins. Every single time you do these things, it's a win. It's a win. So you do this for 30 days, you might not see a huge result. You do this for 60 days, you might be starting to gain a little bit of traction. 90 days later, guys, you will start to see the results kick in and you'll look back and you'll just say, dude, how did I even get from, from, from that point 
to this point and it'll happen quick. And, um, you know, it's the willingness to be able to push through in the beginning when things don't seem to be working, you know, right. When, when doubt is really starting to creep in, but you show up and you do it anyway, you show up and you do it anyway, you work for free, essentially, right. You're going to work, 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 get paid, work, 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 get paid, work, 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 get paid, work, 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 get paid, work, 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 get paid, work, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid. That might be some of you guys have been around the industry for all you already know, you've heard that before, but that's how this industry works, right? And that's what makes you a leader is the average person might not be willing to do that, right? The average person is willing to just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to clock in and clock out, give me my paycheck. And I'm going to go home. I'm going to pay my bills. I'll be here on Monday. I'll be here on Tuesday. I'll be here on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm going to get my two weeks of vacation, maybe if I'm lucky throughout the year. And I'm okay doing that. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, guys. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what makes you happy, then that's what makes you happy. But I'll, I'll end it with this. And this is something that um, I was reading it earlier. And every time I read it, I, uh, <laughs> every time I read it, I just like get goosebumps. And um, here's what it says. It says, greatness is not on sale. Greatness costs what it costs. I heard a man say once, if you're the kind of guy that comes home after work, plops on the couch and watches TV when you can barely pay the bills, if you are the kind of guy who puts your favorite TV show or sports team more important than your own financial freedom, if you aren't the kind of guy who is willing to go out and fight for your success, for your family's success, or to leave a legacy for your kids, I'm not going to call you a loser, but my friend, you are definitely not a winner. But here's the disclaimer. It's not going to be easy. You're going to struggle. You're going to lose sleep, but it's going to be worth it. And I'll end it with that, guys, because one thing that I've ever taken from any of the leaders that I've ever talked to or heard from speak. Um, that's the one common denominator. They all have their different stories. They all have their different journeys. They all got there a little bit different ways. Um, but the, the thing that they always say is it was all worth it. It was all worth it. And I know that's going to be true, uh, for each and every single one of you guys, regardless of what you're going through right now. Some of you might be in winter. Some of you might be in summer. Some of you might be in momentum. Some of you might not be, but one thing is true. I can promise you if you're willing to endure the pain, suffer the pain right now, go through it, keep showing up when it's not the easiest thing in the world to show up, but you do it over and over and over again. I don't know when that time will come, but if you continue to do that and you continue to work on these things, work on yourself and work on your business every single day, and you don't put a deadline on it. You don't say, I'm going to give this three months and we'll see where I'm at. Then if I'm not where I want to be, maybe I'll hang it up. You don't do that to yourself. You don't do that to yourself. You don't know when your time is going to come. But what I can promise you is when the time does come, it's going to be worth it. And you're going to be happy that you didn't quit. You're going to be happy that you showed up when other people didn't. Okay? And we're going to be celebrating. So, guys, if you're not already, go to go to uh, get your ticket. Go to Orlando. If That's one of the things I forgot to put on the list of your perfect customer and your perfect IBO. They go to events. They attend every event. And uh, that's probably one of the biggest things uh, I could tell you guys is obviously, you know, you've heard it a hundred times, but I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for these events. Um, big decisions are made at big events. Joey just dropped or AJ just dropped the link. I am academy.events slash Orlando guys, get your tickets uh, coming up in a couple of months. I'll see you guys there. Uh, but I appreciate you guys. If you guys got some value, uh, feel free to put up a story and tag me on Instagram. I'll reshare all of them. Um, but bro, Joey, I appreciate you having me on here and uh, I will pass it back over to you with any closing thoughts to, to take us home. My man, I appreciate you guys. God bless. We'll talk to you guys soon. Passing it back to me. I don't want to botch that. That was unreal. Uh, that's, and that's what I'm talking about. This dude needs some stage time because it's messages like that that even have me sitting here 11 years in the industry thinking, dude, I need to become the perfect rep again. I need to become the perfect customer again. And at the end of the day, it is true. If you went out there and actually did a thousand exposures, I love that question. Would you do it? If you were going to be a chairman 10 after you show me a thousand or a chairman 100 after you show me a thousand exposures and you'll be making a hundred thousand a month, would you go do it? That's all it is. And, and again, he's talking about, would you go out there and, and sacrifice and really go after this thing. Listen, we call it a sacrifice. We call it, he said, you know, would you go out there and, and grind your face off or whatever you want to call it. Listen, I worked construction in the middle of winter for like no pay. I was damn near a slave, right? We've all worked jobs where we're just looking at the check. Like, dude, what is this? Working a job you don't like for somebody you don't like. Uh, for me, it was freezing in the winter and my fingers and toes get frozen. And I'm telling my guy like, dude, I am freezing right now. He's like, dude, quit being a wuss. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I don't know my fingers and my toes don't have blood flow, but I don't know how we can stand out here doing this all day long for 11 bucks an hour. That was hard. 
me thinking about the sacrifice when me and Mikhail would go from coffee shop to coffee shop or me and Kessler or me and AJ, that's fun. Looking back at it, take it from me. I miss those days. I genuinely miss those days. I, I, sure, I maybe I didn't have that much money, but I knew where I was going. And it's a, it, we, they always say it's about the journey. But when you're in the journey, you're like, dude, I just want to be there. I just want my dream life to happen. Dude, I'm very grateful. And I wouldn't trade this for anything where I'm at. But the journey is, is something I wish I would have embraced a little bit more. And it's not even a sacrifice. It's fun hanging out with people, learning and growing and, and leveling up together. And uh, that's what I love about you guys out in Texas is you guys really do good at that. Just sticking together. You guys are a family and you guys are all growing together. And I can see it since you joined to now, everybody. It's it's just incredible what you guys are doing. So um, Tyler, again, I appreciate you, brother. That was outstanding, amazing. Uh, you're one of the best in the industry and uh, the people that get access to you, they have access to you right now before you really fly away and uh, just don't get too big. Don't forget about us small guys, bro. Don't forget about us small guys down here. But again, I hope you guys got some value out of that. Appreciate y'all and um, let's get it to the top we go. Peace guys.